Welcome to another episode of Southern Ohio Matters with host Gina Collinsworth. Gina is the Information Coordinator with the Ohio Valley Regional Development Commission. Gina, it is always a pleasure talking with you. Hey, Patrick. It's great to see you. And we're looking outside at blue skies. I think spring is coming to Southern Ohio. So we're excited. Patrick, we've got a great show for you on the show today. We're going to talk a lot about the Appalachian Regional Commission in our area and how they work in our area. So I'd like to welcome my first guest. Sam Brady is here. Sam, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Gina. How are you and Patrick? We are doing great. Thanks for taking time to be on the show and talk about all the great things happening in Jackson County. Sam, you are the executive director of the Jackson County Economic Development Partnership, and we met through Ohio Valley Regional Development Commission, where I'm the public information coordinator. So a lot of the great things that are happening, I get to talk about them, and this show is one way to do that. So I'm glad you're here today. Let's talk about Jackson County. Absolutely. Let's talk about Jackson County. Great things are happening. So I know that today I just saw there was an announcement that Site Selection Magazine has named Jackson County and the area one of the top sites in America. Is that right, Sam? Explain it a little more. I know you'll know more about it. That's correct. Uh, Site Selection uh, Magazine, uh, as part of its annual Governor's Cup Awards, which Ohio, uh, as another top state for Site Selection uh, Magazine, uh, based on certain uh, project criterias, uh, as named Ohio, uh, right up there of Texas, as one of the you know top places to do business and uh, site a project in the country. And as part of that, uh, those ratings and that criteria, uh, Jackson County, or more specifically, the Jackson, Ohio Micropolitan Statistical Area, which encompasses all of Jackson County, mm-hmm. uh, was named as one of the top 50 uh, uh, locations based on... Uh, qualifying projects for 2020 uh, and as part of those projects uh, they were off, obviously jobs ohio back projects along with our friends at ohio southeast but also the ohio valley regional development commission actually directly helped f- uh, fund two of those projects uh, that actually gave us that rating so uh, congratulations to uh, john hemmings and the whole team at ovrdc doing great things for southern ohio and just, you, you all are just great partners, and we love working with you. Thank you so much. It's a wonderful organization, and you know, we work with 12 counties here in southern Ohio, and Jackson is kind of on the edge of our easternmost, and then we, we uh, cover all the way over to Claremont County. But some of those sites that you were talking about, when we say site selection, Sam, in your role as an economic development director, tell us what does that mean to the average person? What is a site in an average person's world? <laughs> well, um, my, my predecessor, Jennifer Jacobs, had a saying whenever we were uh, talking about site selection or site development. She would say, a piece of property does not a site make. A, a, a site uh, is, you know, one that can be quantifiably um, identified as, you know, obviously, you know, it's, it's physical limitations. How, how many acres is it? But then you, you delve into what are its attributes, is it flat? Is it, you know, is it development ready? What infrastructure is available to the site? And then, you know, when we actually say what infrastructure is available to the site, what is its actual proximity? Uh, you know, infrastructure is considered, you know, is it available to the edge of the property? In which case, you know, that would be considered infrastructure ready. And a lot of times we have uh, properties that you know, on the surface, uh, no pun intended, would look like, you know what, this would be great for a project, but you don't have uh, water in proximity. You don't have the uh, availability of broadband, uh, natural gas, the things that, you know, a company is going to need to actually operate and produce uh, and create jobs in your community. Hmm. There were a few sites that we wanted to talk about because I feel like Jackson just keeps hitting home runs. And one of them that I think has gotten a lot of press lately with the COVID (laughs) epidemic is the Phoenix Quality Manufacturing Plant. And that is just now getting started. Sam, talk a little bit about that project. So uh, uh, Phoenix Quality Manufacturing, or for the purposes of uh, saving on some words, PQM, was is, is a startup manufacturing startup that actually uh, is a, a combination of American and Canadian investors uh, who uh, found a, 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 a available property in Jackson, available industrial site, 
repurposed it uh, to produce uh, personal protective equipment or N95 mask here in the United States under North American standards to help respond to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And the fact, uh, you know, really answering President Trump's call, you know, we need to create and manufacture this stuff that is so vital to keeping our, our, our frontline healthcare workers safe, you know, keeping the man, you know, just everyday people uh, safe in, you know, in potentially infectious environments. We need the assurances those are being produced and manufactured under the strictest of, you know, manufacturing guidelines, which, you know, quite frankly, you're not going to find, you know, any higher standard for manufacturing than North America. And the fact that right here, Jackson County, Southern Ohio, Appalachian, Ohio, is, you know, we have local leaders and investors who are taking the lead, taking the initiative and making that happen right here. Just uh, you're always proud of investment that happens in your community. But when you see companies like that, you know, taking the risk and the initiative for, you know, almost out of patriotic duty, it's, it's inspiring and it really makes you excited for what you do for a living. It sure does. Made in America. You know, that yes. means something. And Southern Ohio, we are very patriotic people, very, um, very committed to our American way of life and our people. And there was another project we wanted to talk about that you were talking about with Partnership Plaza. And I said, I love the name. I think it's a great name. What? Tell us more about that project. So Partnership Plaza in, in August of 2019, uh, the uh, Kroger actually pulled out of Wellston, Ohio, after uh, probably over 50 years uh, of operations uh, in that community, uh, walking away from an 8,600 square foot uh, building right in the heart of downtown Wellston. Now, Wellston uh, actually is my hometown, uh, and it's uh, it has had a rough couple of decades. It was you know a mining centric economy. Uh, when the uh, deep mining, strip mining, obviously those things were uh, phased out uh, robustly in Southern Ohio, it left some uh, holes and, you know, Wellston's downtown really paid a price for that. Now, over the last five to uh, five years or so, uh, you've had some uh, local leaders in Wellston uh, just taking ownership of the situation, uh, really making things happen, putting their money where their mouth is. Uh, buying buildings, opening new businesses, and it's just been on a great uh, comeback trajectory over the last few years. So this was really a, a, a kick in the gut uh, in, in, in spite of all the success they've been having. <clears throat> so working with uh, uh, Wellston Mayor Charlie Hudson, who sits on the executive committee of the partnership and uh, other partners, uh, our office uh, took the uh, initiative and actually structured a deal with the City of Wellston Revolving Loan Fund and a generous grant uh, through the Joint Economic Development Initiative of Southern Ohio and Floor BWXT to purchase the building. So we have purchased that uh, asset as of December 28th of 2020. So it's, it's, set, it's set empty for over a year, almost you know, about a year and a half now <clears throat> at this point. But we are uh, redeveloping it as Partnership Plaza, hoping to target it for multi-tenant professional office space, uh, smaller retail, just you know, trying to leverage uh, the advantages we have, especially through the, uh, the financing uh, package we're able to do with the city of Wellston to uh, make sure this asset doesn't become a uh, public blight and an eyesore. Jackson County Economic Development Partnership Executive Director Sam Brady has announced his agency's purchase of the former Kroger location in Wellston, creating a new progress-oriented hub in the county dubbed Partnership Plaza. During a special event held Tuesday morning in Wellston, Brady, Partnership Chairman Steve Pritchett, Wellston Mayor Charlie Hudson, and Jackson County Commissioners Paul Haller and John Hensler addressed the future plans for the 8,600 square foot facility. Brady told the Telegram that the partnership intends to redevelop the property into multi-tenant flex space that could be used for professional offices. Our intention for this space is to make it a job creation asset uh, for Jackson County and the city of Wellston. Uh, we intend to redevelop the property into a multi-tenant flex facility uh, suitable for professional offices, services, or even uh, small retail. Prior to the event, State Representative Jason Stevens said that he is excited for the future possibilities of this project 
and is encouraged to see our local leaders working together to set the stage for a better future for the city of Wellston. Uh, it's an exciting thing for down, downtown Wellston um, because three things are going to happen here. Uh, job creation, uh, the creation of goods and services, and also we've, we've taken a building that could uh, start to deteriorate pretty quickly and we're going to make sure that it's maintained uh, for the community. So it's really a three-pronged approach, uh, approach by us right now. Working uh, with the partnership, the executive committee especially, you know, we have business leaders in the community, we have elected officials in the community, all working for a common goal, and that's jobs and, uh, um, you know, for the county to uh, prosper. And so uh, this relationship that we have with the Jackson County Commissioners is part of the partnership. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all about jobs. So, uh, and we got some further projects coming down the line. You know, we have uh, the Meridian property that's uh, being developed. And as soon as we get the uh, okay from the EPA, uh, that property will go on the market and we figure it will go pretty fast. So we're hoping to do this in the very near future, uh, again, down there on that property and again, that means jobs to the community, which will increase our tax base to the, to the county. And, uh, you know, it just makes Jackson County a, a better place and a, a thriving community. Uh, you had one more project, the redevelopment of the Meridian plant site. Absolutely. As everyone knows, uh, in 2006, we had a, a really uh, devastating plant closure uh, here in 2006-2007. Uh, in Jackson, uh, the loss of the Meridian Automotive uh, plant site, formerly Goodyear in Cambridge, uh, 400 great paying jobs uh, just went away overnight. And uh, the, the community struggled to, to come back from that. Now we're, we're working through it, uh, you know, here 15 years later. But uh, that property uh, was, uh, was left in poor condition. Uh, with some environmental issues. Uh, in 2018, uh, through a generous grant from Jobs Ohio uh, and our partners again at Ohio Southeast, uh, working again with uh, Jadiso and the uh, Florida WXT uh, Opportunity Fund, we were able to put together a package to actually purchase 20 acres, 21 acres or so of that property and remediate the environmental uh, issues there. And we are currently working with the Ohio EPA on uh, just quantifying the work that's been done. You know, we'll have 20 plus acres of industrial rail site available right here at the intersection of US 35 and State Route 32. Wow. Sam is the executive director of the Jackson County Economic Development Partnership. And you can hear from all the work you're doing, Sam, that you are a leader, not just in our area, but also you're being recognized because you're part of the Appalachian Leadership Institute which are 40 fellow representatives from across the states of Appalachia that come together. Tell us a little bit about what that process has been like. And my question I'm, I'm wondering about is, when you all get together, do you see similarities in your communities and some of the things that everyone is, is uh, sharing, some of those different challenges? Sure. Well, I, I am uh, honored to be one of four fellows representing the state of Ohio. Uh, in this, the Appalachian Leadership Institute, this class. Uh, it's been a really uh, eye-opening process. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, it's, it's been entirely virtual, but hopefully uh, as it opens up, we'll actually get together and meet. And uh, I, I was actually kind of surprised at how universal some of these community uh, challenges are. Uh, you know, all the way, you know, people in uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, and Georgia are experiencing the same things, the same challenges we are here in uh, Appalachian, Ohio, or Southern Ohio uh, on an everyday basis. And it, it, it made the world seem a little, um, I won't say a little smaller, um, you know, as though uh, maybe our problems aren't necessarily as insurmountable as, you know, our, um, our proximity to make them seem. And we're, we're, we're experiencing the same, said the same challenges uh, they're, they're universal across Appalachia, um, but we also, uh, I am proud to say, you know, some of the things unique about Ohio, Southern Ohio, and even Jackson County, uh, in many ways, I find that, you know, our communities, at least from a leadership and a commitment standpoint of those leaders, we're kind of, uh, we're kind of ahead of the, the game. Uh, we have some great, dedicated, hardworking leaders, our commissioners, our mayors, 
uh, our, our development partners, you know, just like you know, I mentioned with OVRDC, Ohio Southeast, we have people who are committed to making it happen. We're mission focused. We're mission centric. And it's, it's not about a headline. It's not about, uh, you know, a personal uh, attaboy or adulation. We're, we're in it to get this done for our community and our people and the next generation. Sam, thank you for taking time today. We appreciate it. It's been a great conversation and kudos to Jackson. I, I know great things are happening and going to continue happening there. So thank you for sharing the info with us. Patrick, aren't there great things happening in Jackson County? It's amazing. Oh, I, I, I think it is. You, you know, I've uh, had the opportunity to work in, in Jackson County for a number of years. And the people that surround Jackson County are very positive. There's great leadership. So whatever, whatever uh, kudos uh, Sam Brady needs and deserves, he's one of many. Uh, yeah. that really make Jackson County grow and thrive. It's amazing what all's happening. My next guest is also a great partner. Uh, we actually work together here at Ohio Valley Regional Development Commission. So I want to welcome to the second part of our show, Jessica Keaton, who is our coordinator of economic development. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Gina. Hi, Patrick. How are you all today? We're doing good. Hey. We're so glad you're here because Sam and I were just talking about some of the projects they have going on in Jackson County. And also we talked about the ARC Leadership Academy or Leadership yeah. Institute. And I think it's a great segue to talk about the Appalachian Regional Commission and just tell us something about it, a little bit about the origins of it. And um, for people that don't know, what is the Appalachian Regional Commission? Absolutely. Um, so the Appalachian Regional Commission was formed in the 60s in response to the war on poverty. Um, I think JFK had visited the region and noted the poverty in the area. And, um, you know, those administrations uh, preceding him wanted to really help the people in this area and lift them up so they can reach parity with the nation. So that is really ARC's core goal is to help Appalachians reach parity with the rest of Americans so we can all, uh, you know, have a fair shot at the American dream. So some of the projects and, and programs they have going on, not only the Leadership Institute, but I wanted to mention they have extended the deadline for people who want to apply to the Entrepreneurship Academy, if I can say that correctly. And also they have the Oak Ridge National Laboratory STEM program. And those are for high school seniors that are wanting to learn new skills. And it's just a great uh, organization. The other thing they do that we have a lot of connection to are some of the program dollars that come through. And Jessica, right now you are waiting on letters of intent and mm -hmm. grant applications. And then I believe today is the last day for power applications to come in. Is that right? I believe so. Um, we don't deal directly with power in our office. We can help hook you up with technical assistance. If you're, you're looking for that, we can offer some um, basic technical assistance, but we are so fortunate that we have a great state partner in the Ohio Development Services Agency and the Governor's Office of Appalachia. Um, they have been a great supporter of the program. So they actually have hired two consultants who work year round. So if you've missed the power deadline for this year, um, you can still reach out and we can hook you up with them and they will help you develop an even stronger project for next year. That sounds good. So what are some of the areas of interest that ARC provides funding for? Some of those uh, special projects that they would like to see us get done here in our area. So ARC is all about economic development right now. Um, they wanna see businesses expand, people, get trained, jobs created, jobs retained. Um, we want to see tourism, things like that. Anything that really boosts our economic health here. Um, of course, uh, for projects specifically, uh, jobs created is going to be uh, the number one most attractive outcome for any project you submit. However, that doesn't mean that it's exclusive to job creation. There's other areas that I just mentioned and many others because ARC is a very flexible program. Uh, can fit for funding eligibility. I know that you and I both participated in a recent tourism uh, conference that came through the governor's office of Appalachia talking about tourism jobs and mm -hmm. the opportunities connected to those. So 
you know, that's an exciting thing. Also, um, another area they actually like to focus on too, just recently they've started focusing more on helping with substance use disorder, crisis recovery programs. Yeah, so recovery to work is a big area in ARC right now. Um, and you've probably seen it in the federal, uh, at the federal level, this is something that they really want to tackle and help alleviate across America. And ARC is no exception to that. So ARC is very focused on especially recovery to work um, and, and using that as a piece to help uh, combat the substance use disorder crisis. So you and I were talking and working on getting the word out about a new um, a new thing we've added to our application, and that's the letter of intent. So yes. Jess, tell us about what that letter of intent is for and how to connect with that. Well, our letter of intent is really to help us give more intensive assistance to those of you out there who are thinking about applying for ARC and going through our pre-application process that you look at it and you think, wow, this is a really daunting process because we ask for a lot of things. Uh, there are a lot of moving pieces to a ARC pre-application and we completely understand that. So we've developed the ele- uh, letter of intent uh, to help us and to help you. Um, and it helps by, you know, we've got this, this one page um, LOI, as we like to call it for short, for you to fill out. Um, you can do that anytime during the pre-application period. That's open until May 14th at noon. Um, you fill it out, email it to me and my email address, um, which is jkeaton, K-E-E-T-O-N, at ovrdc.org. You can find that on our website as well. I'll look over uh, the project details that we ask for in that letter of intent, and I'll call you or email you and talk to you about your project. If um, it's a project that doesn't really fit ARC, I'll let you know that. So you're not putting all of that work and that time and money and effort into your project. So, you know, not to move forward. If you do have an eligible project, I will work with you um, to look through it and see how you can strengthen it and really offer tailored assistance walk you through any steps of the process that you need. And as a bonus, because we want people to submit letters of intent, if you do put a pre-application, you actually get a few additional points on your scoring criteria once all the pre-applications come in and we score them. Bonus points. That's always good. Yeah. (laughs) Everybody loves bonus points. (laughs) (laughs) So Jess, who is eligible for ARC programs funding? I should say. Yeah, ARC programs are open to units of government, um, nonprofit organizations, labor unions, schools, libraries, and things like that. So if you didn't, that's not an exhaustive list. So if you didn't hear your organization on there, uh, reach out. We're always happy to answer questions. Tell us a few of the programs you can think of to close this part of our segment that um, are some of the success stories on projects you've recently worked with on ARC funding. So uh, we recently helped the Adams County Library with a technology project to get new computers and software so that job seekers and other library patrons can use those. Uh, we frequently um, assist with water and sewer. Um, I, I think that's what people tend to think of a lot when they think ARC, but it's not exclusive to that. However, that's still a big part of the program. Um, we also do things like access roads to help uh, businesses and access road money is actually 100%. So um, that is an attractive program as well. However, it's extremely competitive. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So we do do lots of different things. We've, we've helped uh, get training equipment for CTCs and colleges and even labor unions so that they, they can train people and put them to work. So we do lots of different things. Yes. I was thinking workforce development is another you know, big push and focus for ARC programs. We're always trying to upskill our workers to be connected to the jobs of tomorrow. I mean, that's sounds like a PR term, but, you know, AI is coming and automation and it's, it's important for us to be ready for that. And workforce development is a big part of that. Especially with the broadband expansion, which is another area, if you're, you're interested in, in that. And as broadband expands, we're going to see even more of those things happen. So it's exciting. 
It is exciting. Jessica, it's great to work with you. Before we go, we have a few seconds just to remind people about a few of the deadlines. Um, if you want to reach out, they can do that with email to you, right? Yes, anytime. Okay, so Jay Keaton, K-E-E-T-O-N at O-V-R-D-C dot org. And uh, just looking for you to get involved. If you have um, projects out there for ARC funding, I'm sure that Jess would love to help you get those funded. Always. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. Have a great day. You too, Gina. Thanks. Patrick, that is an amazing show today. We've learned so much. What do, what do you think about that? I think that's great. You know, the Appalachian Regional Commission it has had a tremendous effect in not only Southern Ohio, but all the way up towards uh, the Cleveland area with infrastructure, with uh, monies for making manufacturing companies more stable. I think it's just fantastic. That, you know, health is another area they like to help with and community infrastructure, education and training. I mean, they really have a lot of programs uh, from, you know, the high school students like you saw for the institutes and the entrepreneurship academy and all that, all the way up to helping manufacturing and jobs, economic development. It's a really great uh, organization. So we're proud to be a partner with them here at OVRDC. You know, speaking about being proud you have another organization that you want to shout out to. Absolutely. The shout out is so much fun. We get to take a little bit of time to just pat people on the back. You know, you don't get enough of that. So we want to shout out today and talk to talk about a, an initiative that's a partnership. It's the Recovery to Work cohort partnership and Julie Boland from Ross County Community Action Commission, Michelle Skaggs from Belicio Foods, she's the senior manager HR, uh, Jamie Colley who is a counselor at Hope Source Treatment, and then Kim Reynolds, the development director for OVRDC. They have come together as the core team for the Recovery to Work partnership and it's all about trying to help people with substance abuse disorder get back into the workforce, connect back to the community through good jobs. And the one of the ways to really support people in recovery and long-term recovery are what they call wraparound services. So they're talking about transportation and eliminating barriers to that, eliminating barriers to childcare. And one of the big ones is recovery housing. So housing is always an issue. So there's a recovery housing summit that the Recovery to Work cohort had organized and I got to help with that project, but they've done amazing things to kind of shine the light on these opportunities to build and maintain and support people in recovery with recovery housing. So that's the shout out today. I think that's fantastic. Gina, I always enjoy your show. But one of the, the things, you know, just because it's Southern Ohio Matters, I really appreciate all the work and dedication Ohio Valley Regional Development Commission does and to you. Thank you, Patrick. You know, our guests today, Jessica Keaton and Sam Brady, you know, Sam mentioned he's getting together with others from across the Appalachian states and finding how everyone has a lot of the same issues. So it's good to have this show where we can all come together and talk about solutions. <laughs> I think that's great. Hey, we're talking with uh, Gina Collinsworth. Gina Collinsworth is the information coordinator with Ohio Valley Regional Development Commission in Pike County. Uh, Gina, um, thank you for allowing me to visit with you. Thank you, Patrick. We'll see you next month.